How we doing, guys? The draft's coming up. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about the Washington Commanders slash Washington Redskins, their draft history in the first round. We're going to keep it short. I'm going to hop right into it. I'm going to pull up some stats and stuff like that about the players and uh, tell you whether or not we hit or miss on them. And then I'm going to rank them on a tier. So the tiers, let's talk about the tiers. The tiers are kind of self-explanatory. Here they are. Okay. So the first pick, uh, these are all first round draft picks. Okay. So it's not like our whole draft or like the best player from that draft that we got. It is literally just the, the, if we had a first round draft pick, cause some years we didn't, uh, 2013, 2014, 2006, 2003, we didn't have one, but, uh, if we had a first round pick, I'm going to go over it and I'm going to sort it into the tier and tell you guys whether or not we totally missed. So for the first year that we're going to start off on, it's going to be 1999 because that is when Dan Schneider acquired the team. We actually got Champ Bailey first round pick seven. So let's go into Champ Bailey. So Champ Bailey, as many of you guys know, he's a Hall of Famer. He's a fantastic cornerback. Uh, he played mostly for the Denver Broncos, but he did get drafted by the Washington Redskins in 1999, and he played for us for four years. Right out the gate after the draft, Bailey signed a five-year deal for $12 million with the Washington Redskins on July 24th, 1999. But after his five-year contract came to an end, he threatened to hold out and eventually got traded to the Denver Broncos for Clinton Portis. We actually also got a second round pick. I'm reading that now. And to be honest, obviously Champ Bailey had a fantastic Hall of Fame level career, but Clint Porter served us pretty well and second round draft pick might have done something in the future. I'll have to look at it. Even though Champ Bailey's Hall of Fame years came on the Denver Broncos, he started out hot with us and he's going to land himself in the impact player column solely because most of his career happened in Denver. But for us, he had a total of, let me count, he had 18 interceptions in five years, which is a little bit over three a year. Pretty great. So we're going to put him all the way up in the impact player category. On to the next. In 2000, the Washington Redskins had the second overall pick acquired from, honestly, I'm not sure how we got that, but we had the second and third. Am I reading this right? Dude, in 2000, we had the first, we, wait, hold up. We had first round, second, and third overall. How did we fuck that? Well, we didn't really fuck that one up. In 2000, we selected LeVar Arrington, second overall, and Chris Samuels, third overall, the tackle. We'll start with LeVar. LeVar had seven seasons in the NFL, six of which were with the Washington Redskins. In those six seasons, he tallied 22 and a half sacks. In 2001, he had three interceptions. And in 2003, he forced six fumbles. Now, unfortunately, all these stats combined aren't gonna land him anywhere above solid, but Lavarrington, pretty good career. All things being considered, guys. I mean, we're not comparing him to Luke Keekley. It's, it's the NFL, so. On to Chris Samuels. So obviously, uh, offensive linemen aren't going to really have stats projected anywhere, but in terms of what he's accomplished, he's one of the Washington Redskins' 90 greatest of all time. He's in our ring of fame. He went to three consecutive Pro Bowls. This guy's a goat. We're putting him in the HTTR legend. If you need to see anything more than this clip, let me know in the comments. Hopefully I find a good clip to put there. 2001, the Washington Redskins selected Rod Gardner. Rod Gardner only played his rookie contract for us and then continued on to Carolina, Green Bay, and Kansas City in the span of two years. Three teams, two years. Rod Gardner had one standout season, 2002. He had over 1,000 yards, 1,006 if we're being specific, and eight touchdowns, which was a pretty respectable season, but that was all he put up. Rod Gardner is going to land himself in... I need another category. I think we're still gonna put Rod Gardner in the solid group here. Uh, there really isn't many categories. I, I should make a better list next time, but he's not really a dumb pick, but he didn't really do much. He only lasted a couple years in the NFL, so moving on. In 2002, the Redskins selected Patrick Ramsey with their 32nd pick in the first round. See, Mr. Patrick never played more than uh, 11 games in a season for us. He was always getting hurt. His best season was 2003, where he threw for 2,166 yards, 14 touchdowns and nine interceptions, a QBR of 75.8, and a whopping 62 rushing yards to add. So as you guys can see, he did not do very well for us. He didn't play very long. He was a journeyman afterwards. He's going to land in the dumb picks. In the 2003 NFL draft, we didn't have a first round selection. But in 2004, our first round draft selection was Sean Taylor, number five overall, who is my favorite player of all time. If you guys want to see a separate Sean Taylor video, please let me know. He's my favorite player of all time. He's got a really cool story. Some of the uh, stories that his teammates would tell uh, were really cool and interesting to listen to. So if you guys want to see a video based on him, let me know. Leave a like 
And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do that. Sadly, Sean Taylor passed away November 27th, 2007, I believe. I don't even have to look that up. That's Yeah, wow. He died November 27th. Oh, I know what day he died, man. Sean was one of the greatest players to ever play uh, the sport of football. We don't really need to talk much about it. I'm sure every Redskins fan knows who he is at some point. So if you're here watching this and you're probably a Redskins fan, you don't need to know much about him. He's going to go down in the HTTR legend, of course. In his three short years, he made a huge impact and has left a lasting effect on the NFL. Um, all right, on to something more happy. I, I, I'll cover it. Listen, if you guys do want that Sean Taylor video, you got to let me know because I'm not covering anything about him, really. I don't really want to get sad, so we're going to skip over him. We know how great Sean was. I'll put up a couple clips. It is incomplete. He is just trilled. Looking left, fires. It is incomplete. Sean Taylor. Back to pass, steps up, going deep. Oh, T.O. is leveled by Sean Taylor, and he's slow getting up. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. In 2005, we had two first-round draft picks, and with our first, we selected Carlos Rogers, ninth overall. And oddly enough, I'm looking at it now. I didn't know they went to the same school, but our 25th pick in the same 2005 NFL draft first round was Jason Campbell, the quarterback from Auburn. So we got both quarterback and cornerback, kind of cool. If we start with looking at Carlos block hands, as I like to call him, a lot of you may know that he had an interesting NFL story. He had laser eye surgery a couple years into his career and majorly improved in terms of interceptions and pass deflections as if he couldn't see beforehand. The reason I call him Carlos Blockhands is because you could throw a ball straight to him when he was in his rookie or sophomore season with the Redskins and he would just straight up drop it every time. He played five years for us and all things considered, he was a pretty solid player. So he's gonna land himself in the solid tier. He also played in the 2012 Super Bowl with the 49ers. Uh, that's kind of cool for him. On to Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell was the next quarterback in the quarterback carousel that was the Washington Redskins ever since, I don't know, Mark Rippon or something. I don't know. How long has it been since we've had a good quarterback guy? Someone help. All I know of Jason Campbell is he never could sense pressure and kept getting sacked and fumbled from the backside. Jason Campbell played four years for us and he never put up more than 3,700 yards. His best season would come in 2009 with the Redskins when he threw for 3,600 yards and 20 touchdowns with 15 interceptions. His rating that year was an 86.4, so when you compare him to players like Patrick Ramsey, the quarterback before him, he was actually a step up. And unfortunately, after looking at his, some of his stats, I think I'm going to have to put Jason Campbell in the dumb picks category. Again, I probably should have more tiers, but... He never really put up more than 4,000 yards, 3,600 his best season, 20 touchdowns of 15 interceptions. All the other seasons, he was throwing up a lot of interceptions, and there's a ton of fumbles that I didn't even look at. So he's going to have to go in the dumb picks, guys. In the 2006 season, the Redskins also did not have a first-round draft selection, so we're skipping to the 2007 season. And in the 2007 NFL draft, the Redskins selected number six overall, Leron Landry, baby. Dirty 30. Let's go. Leron Landry was a hard-hitting safety out of LSU that we were going to pair with Sean Taylor and form the infamous Area 51. Number 30, number 21. Add it up. You get, I mean, you know. But these two hard-hitting safeties looked like they were going to take over the NFL. Both of them were laying people out on a play-to-play -play basis and making you second guess whether or not you wanted to jump up and catch that ball. People were making career decisions here, guys. People were doing business things. People were making business decisions trying not to get their head cut off by Area 51. Them aliens, boy. They, you know what I'm saying? They were they were abducting people out there. Splatter Laurent Robinson on the sidelines. He read it all the way. Great disguise. And that's 4'4", 230 pounds. Making a great impact play. That's three of them tonight for Landry. Now, Landry never really had many picks for us, but I am looking at his stats. He played for five seasons for us and went on to go play for the Jets and Colts. I will say with Laurent Landry, he began to be less durable over the years. He played all 16 games his first two seasons and then followed that up with 15 games, but then had nine and eight in the following two seasons. Laurent kept getting hurt. He was hitting people too hard and he was hurting himself, honestly. And I know I said I might put him an impact player, but after looking at some of his stats, he's going to have to be in the solid player tier. 
In 2008, we didn't have a draft pick either. So moving on to 2009, we got 13th overall, Brian Arakpo from Texas. Arakpo had six illustrious seasons with us and tore his bicep a couple times and then moved on to the Tennessee Titans and had four great years with them and tore his bicep a couple times. My biggest problem with Brian Arakpo was there was so much hype built around his speed and power and aggression, but he kept tearing himself apart during weight room sessions. I don't know if you guys remember, you may have been young, I was young, but Brian Arakpo was like one of the most hyped up players we had in the 2000s and he never really made it to the field. He kept blowing out his bicep while doing bench presses. Maybe I'm making this up. Did he? Ha did this happen more than once? Looking at his stats, he didn't play at all in the 2012 or 2014 seasons. Even with all these injuries, Arakpo had 40 sacks in these six years with Washington, so I'm gonna have to put him in the impact player category. I know I'm gonna get some heat for that one because I know he wasn't consistent at all, but still guys, you gotta look at some of the stats here. He's he's forcing fumbles year after year. He's got 11, eight and a half, nine, got hurt, 10, got hurt, and then went off to another team and continued to produce. He's an impact player, guys. Next up is a big one, that's for sure. We've got Trent Williams, guys. We selected Trent Williams number four overall in the 2010 draft. I don't gotta say much about Trent Williams. He was a stud on our team and unfortunately due to mishandling a medical condition that he was dealing with, he had to go. Uh, he didn't wanna stay with our team. We didn't respect him very well. So he moved on to the 49ers and you guys see that he's still crushing it over there. He's a top 100 player every year. So he's landing himself in the HTTR legend category. Even though I know some people are salty that he left, but guys, if you had a mass on your head that turned out to be cancerous after multiple team doctors told you that it wasn't, you would be upset too. 